Let's continue exploring 3D objects inside of Photoshop. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of interesting things you can do with your objects or meshes. I, I should preface this by saying I use the term object and in mesh interchangeably. Uh, they basically they mean the same thing. Um, in Photoshop, they refer to it as a mesh. Other programs, it's an object, and in some programs, it's both. But basically, an object or a mesh is the 3D item you have created. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's uh, make a new document. Let's go File New, and we'll do an 11 by 8 and a half at 72, just as I did in the previous video. And let's make a new 3D shape. I'm going to go into 3D, New Mesh from Layer, which again is making a 3D object. But again, the terms are somewhat interchangeable. Mesh preset, I'm gonna do the soda. Make a soda can. Boom, there we go. Because I was already in my 3D layout, Photoshop did not ask me if I would like to switch to the 3D layout, but if you're in a different uh, layout, such as Essentials, it might have you switch to the 3D workspace. Now I'm just gonna rotate around this can a little bit. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of things you can do with the look of the geometry of this object. I'm going to go to my 3D palette here. I'm going to click on Scene, make sure that is active. I'm going to go up here to my Properties, and there's one kind of really cool feature you can do uh, in Photoshop to, to your meshes here. You can turn on a cross-section, and what that does is it cuts the object in half. Isn't that kind of wild? And you can move where the cross-section takes place, so if uh, once the cross-section is turned on, down here is something called an offset. If you drag that offset around, it, it moves the uh, cross section and cuts the object in a different location. You can also change the axes. For example, the Y axis will cut it in half that way. And again, you can adjust that, which is kind of interesting. And then you can do the Z, which will cut it the other direction on the other axes. And again, it's adjustable. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to keep it on the X. And I'm going to keep the offset, yeah, I'll just keep it at zero right in the middle for now. The little transparent plane that is indicating where the, where the cross section is will appear in your final image unless you shut it off. So right here is a checkbox for plane. I'm going to turn that off so you can hide the plane. Now I can still adjust the offset and everything. It's just the plane is invisible. It's hidden. You also have an X and Y tilt that will take that plane, let's turn it back on for a minute, and that will allow you to tilt it a little bit as well, so you can swivel it. So I'm just gonna leave that at zero, and let's try the Z real quick, see what that does, it tilts this way. So you can angle the plane, you can angle or tilt where the cross section is taking place. Now again, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that plane off. Down here, further down to the properties, are some other interesting options. You have surface, lines and points. Your 3D objects or your meshes usually have three components that build them. You start by plotting points and those points are then connected by lines. Those lines create surfaces and the surface is what actually renders out what you see, the visible part of the object. So right now I'm seeing the surface of the object. If I uncheck surface, it goes away. It, it won't render out at all. It becomes invisible. So one of these three things, surface lines or points, has to be on or else your object simply doesn't exist. It's almost similar to Illustrator. Like in Illustrator, you could make a path and you can fill it or you could stroke it. So it has a fill attribute and or a stroke attribute. But if you shut off the fill and the stroke, the path still exists. You just don't see it. It has no visible elements. So that's essentially what I've done here. The object still exists, but I haven't applied any visible elements to it. So you have surface, which is what's on by default. Now, one thing that's really fun to play around with is lines. Lines will show you, it'll render out the mesh, the actual geometry that creates the mesh. So now we can have the soda can and we can make it look a little more uh, sort of techy uh, by generating the geometry on it. Now one technique that's kind of common is to go ahead and turn your lines on but shut off your surface and then you see simply the wireframe and you don't get the actual surface of the object which is kind of neat. It strips out the surface attributes and just shows the wireframe which is kind of a cool look for certain things. And you can control the look of these lines a little bit. You can change the color. Let's go ahead and make it like a blue. That's kind of neat. And you can change the width 
they tend to get kind of ugly kind of kind of quick here so the width I think I'm going to keep on maybe two uh, you can also play with the angle threshold this is a neat setting this wireframe is pretty noisy it's got a lot of triangulated polygons meaning every box kind of has a diagonal line coming into it if I take that threshold and crank it up it will simplify the geometry a little bit so if I bring it up to like one degree it doesn't take much just a little bit maybe two degrees there we go two degrees hid a lot of the geometry and now it's a more simplified looking can I, I kinda like the look of that if I keep bringing up the threshold it will reduce the geometry so here you lose some of the, the cross sections that were across the top here that's still you know kinda interesting and eventually if you go too far it, it eats away all the inside polygons and you just see the outer contour so I'm gonna go ahead I'm put, gonna put it to about three or bring it up a little bit more maybe four Beam. Six, five, six, something like that. Looks kind of interesting. Now you'll notice right up here is where the surface was originally. I cannot see through this area. I can see through where the cross section is, but I can't see through the can itself. Uh, so that's an option is to hide the geometry on the other side, the wires on the other side. If I go down here to where it has a checkbox for lines, not the lines that are up here, but there's another version of lines down here. If I uncheck that, you'll see through the entire mesh to both sides. So uh, as I spin around, you can see through one side of the object to the other side. So let's take a look at this angle here. And I'm going to put the lines on. I'm going to shut the lines off. And I'm going to turn them on. And I'm going to turn them off. And again, when they're on, you don't see through the object to the other side. It covers up things. So it can make the object a little easier to identify and look at because you're not seeing through it to the other side. But again, it's a personal preference. All this is just something for you to play around with. I'm going to uncheck lines. I'm going to go down here and turn, up, uh, turn on points. Points are the little dots that connect all the lines together. If you bring up the radius on them, the points get bigger. This, you know, I, I, I've never really used this for anything. I don't find it, uh, you know, the lines kind of make a structure of something. With points, it's a little tough to see what's going on. Points, it kind of, points reminds me of like a connect the dots puzzle where you see all these dots and you really don't get a sense of what it is until you've drawn in the lines and made some sort of shape out of it. So I don't use points a whole lot, uh, but lines is kind of fun to play around with. The only thing I forgot to show you really quick, I'm going to put surface on. When we were doing the cross section, there is a flip-flop arrow over here for side A and side B. If you click on that, it simply reverses where the cross section was taking place. So if I bring up that plane for a moment, and let's say I tilt it on the Z a little bit, if I hit this little arrow right here, it flip-flops the side. So that's just kind of handy to have as well. So this is nothing too difficult uh, this section you just kind of need a little demo on what everything does and you can play around and uh, achieve an interesting look to your object these cross sections are very handy if you're given some sort of um, a product that has you know an outer housing but then on the inside it's got something going on that's different from every other product on the market you can go ahead and do a cross section so you can see inside the object to something else but uh, just to give an idea of just some other little things you can do to your object uh, you can play around with uh, these settings and these are actually located in the scene setting here of your 3D layers. So you gotta go to 3D, click on scene, and then you'll have all these things up here in the properties to play around with. So poke around, have fun, it's kind of interesting, and see what you can come up with.